So I think we are almost live here. Happy New Year to all of you, and thank you for being here live. What we're going to talk about today is about the importance of exercise. Now, I want to share this new study with you because I thought it was quite interesting, and it actually kind of caused some debate with a friend of mine who's an emergency room physician who is sort of my... We totally disagree on a lot of different things. Uh, although he's an exercise enthusiast, um, we have some disagreements and he sort of keeps me balanced in my ideas about healthy living, nutrition, uh, and sleep and stress management, and all these different lifestyle modalities as other things that we could and should be focusing on to reduce overall disease burden and hospitalization and things like that. And he hadn't, we, we had this little online argument. So I wanted to share the study that, that, I was sharing with him to say, hey, look, you you haven't heard from the experts that we should be focusing on exercise as a modality. Like if you really believe that the solution to this current public health crisis is to vaccinate the entire world and give booster shots to 12 year olds, then you should also be promoting physical activity and exercise because there's various uh, pieces of data that we're going to look at today that have clearly that clearly show that exercise improves the body's immunologic response in the post vaccination window. So people that are all about, you know, sort of uh, hanging out in a sort of vaccine passport bubble, people that are uh, all about federal mandates and vaccine mandates and passports and boosters, they should be exercise enthusiasts. They should be promoting exercise especially for the vulnerable. So let me just read to you this paper here. The title, and this was in the journal Brain Behavior and Immunity, it just was published uh, earlier this month, or sorry, sorry, December of 2021. The association between physical activity and the immunogenicity of an inactivated virus vaccine against SARS-CoV-2 in patients with autoimmune rheumatic diseases, okay? So let's uh, sort of pause and unpack the findings of this study, and I'll share with you some images that are quite interesting with regards to the uh, seroprevalence and seroconversion of antibodies. And you can see here, uh, there's actually a pretty significant difference in between individuals who exercise, and these are individuals who have an autoimmune rheumatic disease, like multiple sclerosis or rheumatoid arthritis or other autoimmune disease. And so these individuals, the media would characterize them as being vaccinated but vulnerable. And so this is a new term you're hearing about, how unvaccinated people are actually a risk to the vaccinated vulnerable. Now, okay, we, we can say, yes, they are vulnerable, but now that we know that they are vulnerable, we have, and we, we, we now know that exercise can be a tool to reduce their vulnerabilities. Why are we not hearing about exercise uh, as a modality to make things more effective. And I thought this was quite interesting. So what you see here is they stratified, it was 1,400 subjects to the best of my knowledge, were stratified into two different groups, those who exercise and meet the minimum exercise requirements of 150 minutes per week and and so forth. They, they bifurcated the data that way and then looked at the post-immunization conversion into protective antibodies. And as you were seeing just there, there is a significant difference in the protectiveness of these antibodies. So as we're talking, I'm just going to share this on the screen and keep this, keep this up so you can sort of see uh, the, the reference that we're talking about. Again, I think this is really important. The people that want Big Brother, want the government to control other people to make you safe, they should be encouraging exercise. But here's the irony about this is, Many people that are all, and I can share anecdotal stories, I know you have them as well, uh, many people that are all about sort of their vaccine passport bubble, sometimes they don't even exercise, they don't even eat real food, they don't manage their stress, they don't you know, have a gym membership, they canceled it because it was far too dangerous. So what I see here is if we're really going to follow the science and, and, and follow through with this um, sort of hypothesis that widespread immunization is going to be the solution going forward. Why aren't we hearing from individuals about all these other things that we can do to make the immunizations more effective? And I want to continue to talk about this data because it's really uh, important and it brings up something that, that I think is a serious consideration that we should be encouraging all of the public health officials and you know, the politicians and the, and the media members that are um, sort of suggesting that this problem is from a minority of the individuals who have probably already gotten COVID and decided not to get an immunization, 
when in reality we have a, su- you know, a, a super majority of the population that doesn't exercise, that doesn't eat well, and probably is not getting a sufficient response uh, to the immunization. And, I, and this is not a conspiracy theory. This is well known. In fact, let me read to you some data as we continue to talk about um more of the studies. In fact, we're going to talk about this study that I've already shared with you, but I think it's a timely study to sort of maybe give your friends and family members, your coworkers, the people in your life who need a little nudge to exercise more. This study is really important. We're going to continue to talk about this as I share with you some quotes from uh, from a related study. The title here is Antibody Responses to the Pfizer Vaccine uh, Infection in Infection Naive Individuals with Abdominal Obesity Warrants Attention. And these are the words from the Italian scientists who have now published two studies on this various uh, on this very topic. Uh, and so What's the backstory before we go into this? I think it's helpful that you know this. There's evidence that physical activity can improve the immune response to influenza and pneumococcal vaccines, as as well as haste the recovery uh, for various uh, experimental uh, rhinovirus uh, uh, vaccines and so forth. Uh, A recent meta-analysis from six different studies involving 497 individuals vaccinated against the H1N1 influenza and also H3N2 influenza type B pneumococcal uh, 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 varicella zoster virus showed that a pooled antibody concentration after vaccinations is higher in people who are physically active, uh, leading to the speculation that physical activity may strengthen the potency of immunization programs and help mitigate the potential uh, impact of pandemics such as COVID-19. Now, I share this information with you. We also know this information that physical activity is a tool to support immune system health and reduce the probability of severe disease. Now, I say this, but literally just today, the country of Canada has closed their gyms. Like, so there's there's really this sort of false dichotomy. I mean, it's crazy how the politicians don't know the science. And I'm not insinuating some grand conspiracy theory. I'm just, it seems that government doesn't, is not up to date with some of this stuff. You would think the highest levels of various countries' government would really be up to date with the current research about exercise and amino metabolism and amino senescence and all the different tools that are available to support immune system health. And especially if we're serious about saving lives and making the vaccines very effective, they should come with some sort of additional you know, notes or considerations that Leading up to the vaccine, you should engage in regular physical activity and and do so afterwards. And, you know, there should be some additional recommendations, but I have spent hours looking for some of that before I made this video to see if maybe I'm missing the clip. Maybe Fauci or maybe Anna Walensky or these other people have, Rochelle Walensky, sorry, maybe they've, you know, said it, but I didn't see it. And I couldn't find any information. But what I did find, and maybe this will be a topic of a future podcast or video, was that the circadian clock system, the timing of when you get an immunization may affect its immunogenicity and the post, uh, the effectiveness as well. And I, to me, that was just so fascinating that, you know, again, if we're going to go through with this plan of immunizing everyone, giving multiple boosters, and we're serious about the maximizing the protectiveness of that, why aren't we being a little bit, a little bit more prescriptive about this and timing it from a circadian rhythm standpoint and optimizing the window in which it's given and not encouraging free donuts. I mean, it, to me, it's just maddening. So I, I want want to just quickly check into the feed and then we're going to dive into um, to this question right here. Uh, or, sorry, this study right here from Italian scientists. Let me just make sure that like we're here and you all can hear me uh, and everything like that. Okay, so we we have some folks with us, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to see and uh, uh, okay, we've got a lot of lot of good comments here. So, friends, if you're enjoying this live and, and you think this conversation is helpful for others, you can hit that like button. That just helps uh, us and the channel. I would love to know where you're from, and then what I'm going to do after uh, we share this next study is get to some of your live questions. So we're going to do that. And I do just want to let you know, so we are super excited here. Our Electrolyte Sticks is coming out on the 16th of this month. Uh, A lot of you have participated. Thank you in the buy one, get one free pre-sale. Although that sale is over, we have one final pre-sale before we launch this on the 16th of January. 
And that's when you buy one, you get the second half off. Um, so you can check out the Electrolyte 6. This is a multi-ingredient combination formula that features real salt, not that USP sodium from China, real salt with potassium, with magnesium, with taurine, and also you have creatine uh, and calcium in there as well. So you can use uh, the code over at myoscience.com. Check out the Electrolyte Sticks. I think you're really going to enjoy it. So let's get um, let's talk about this study right here. This is really, really fascinating. So and again, we shared this before, and I think this is just helpful for all of your friends and family who are all freaked out about oh my god, Necron, and, and worried about you know all this sort of stuff. Um, you know, we should be promoting like you know, hey, maybe maybe you should rejoin the gym, maybe you should work out more uh, and do this. And um, here's here's what these scientists found: they found that individuals with abdominal obesity. Um, after immunization had uh, significantly lower levels of antibodies, okay? Now, this should be all over the news because we know that 73% of Americans are overweight or obese and have significant amount of abdominal obesity. So what you're seeing here uh, is, and we've talked about this before, it's this effectiveness or the waning of the protection. So, you know, um, if we're serious about you know, like helping people, uh, we should be serious about recommending that they change their lifestyle, uh, eat more real food, manage their stress, exercise more, maybe intermittent fast and all that. So if you look here at these purple bars here, this is abdominal obesity and individuals that had had no prior exposure, there is a, a uh, significant differences in the levels of, of antibodies, especially amongst people who had uh, a prior exposure uh, to COVID versus those who are infectious naive. That's where the biggest difference is. Uh, so again, this is something that we should be promoting is healthy living and, and things like that. Uh, really, really important stuff. Um, we've shared with you many, many uh, different studies about this. And this is sort of the last study. And then I want to get to some of your live questions is um, the importance of metabolic health to reduce disease severity. Because now that's what we're hearing a lot about is, well, Omicron's not that severe for most people. It's more mild, um, but there is still concern about potentially a the minority of people who could have a severe disease. Well, why are we not hearing about exercise, you know, and so, um, or, or reducing chronic inflammation or supporting metabolic health. So here's one of these, uh, one of these studies that, that we're going to get into. So, um, what I'm going to do is, is let's just get to some questions and, and see if they're, um, um, what I did is I hit pause, so I can't see your chat uh, on here. So I'm going to have to look at my phone. Let me see here. Live chat. Okay, here we are. All right, all. Uh, again, thank you for being here live. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, like I said, I just, this ER physician friend of mine, he gets kind of mad at me sometimes with some of the things that I, you know, say um, because I'm all about promoting health uh, and, and all that. And so I think we should be uh, encouraging encouraging health. We know that healthy people are not frequently the ones that are dying or in the hospital. Um, so let's get to some of your live questions here. Uh, as a health and wellness movement specialist, I've been saying this for the last two years as a response, but for the last 17 years, uh, while list in the industry, looking forward to this presentation. Thank you for that. Um, Thanks, everyone, for some of the great stuff uh, here. Okay. Uh, In Motion Outdoors says, we should talk about the OSHA mandate on uh, companies with 100 or more employees requiring the jab. Yeah, so that is now going to the Supreme Court, as many of you know. And although uh, from the people that I have been following that are uh, actively involved in in sort of uh, that lawsuit, I'm, I'm not sure... It's where that's going to go. Um, historically, the Supreme Court doesn't really get involved in vaccine-related cases, so this is going to be really interesting. Okay, um, Volak says, what about 30,000 steps to compensate the rest days? Yeah, uh, 30,000 steps is a lot of steps, my gosh. So if you're doing that on a somewhat regular basis, uh, hats off to you. That is quite amazing. Um, so so good on you for doing that. I think that's that's pretty impressive. Okay. Uh, Best Bargain Fashion says, you are asking for there to be logical conclusions drawn from facts by others. Common sense doesn't even enter into the equation for people who are super freaked out. You're right. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it's true. Okay. Iron Wolf bur Burpees uh, changed me around 180. So it's like a, it was a big shift for you. So William Woke, thank you for that. Uh, Swamp Hawk in the house. Hey, man, what's happening? Um Yes, 
we um, exercise is important. Uh, okay, what else? What else? <sighs> Uh, so the politicians know about the science, but care more about control. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I partially agree with you, but I wonder if they really know this. I just think, honestly, government is, is pretty unorganized uh, and maybe even on the verge of incompetent. And so that's probably why we're not hearing about this stuff. And that's why I want to share it with you. Okay. Okay. Um, Bruce Lee says, in two years, I've only seen one person on live TV talking about diet and exercise to combat COVID-19, and they are trying to sell a book. Hey, you know what? At least they're trying to help people. You know, books, are, if you think about people selling books, it takes, you're paying like $10, $12, $13 for a book, and it, it took that person months, if not years of their life to write a book. So I understand selling books, but I hear what you're saying. Uh, F. Sen says, I came from morbidly obese to ultra marathon, 270 pounds to 165 pounds. I cannot run it all to, uh, cannot run it all to, to running 250 miles. Uh, mandate exercise. Uh, you will feel great and lower your risk of, of anything. Uh, maybe not more injuries, LOL. Yeah, I'm with, with you. So uh, S F. Asfan, is that how I pronounce your name? Thank you for that wonderful comment, and congrats on all the weight loss. That is that is quite amazing. Okay, video and audio was good. Thank you for that. Um, what else do we got? What else do we got? Uh, greetings from Seattle. Josh D, what's going on? Isn't the snow fun? So, for example, the snow forced a lot of people to stay inside. I noticed it snowed here in Seattle for us. But it was so great for the kids. My daughter was with the neighbor kids, like literally, you know, New Year's Eve, the eve of New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. I mean, just it forced kids to get out. And it was so cool to see so many kids running around and, and doing all that. Doing all that. Um, David, thank you for the sticks. Pre-order. Uh, I think we've been in touch on email, David. So um, I'm super excited. We are going to get that out to you on the 16th of this month, if not sooner. So um, pretty excited about that. Okay, so what is the form of magnesium? It's magnesium bisglycinate chelate. So that's a great question. Um, so that's the form that we use generally unless it's intended to cause a bowel movement. And then we'll use magnesium citrate generally. So um, great, great question there. So Anthony says, hey, Mike, guess uh, what just... Uh, what just got COVID, but doing great, my brother, with you information each week puts me at ease um, from Ohio. Thank you, Anthony. So uh, sounds like you just got COVID, um, as is the entire world. I mean, it's like crazy. Most of the U.S. has COVID right now. It's just insane. Um, so, so absolutely wild. Um, okay, David is outside of uh, Chicago, Northern Illinois. Cool. Um, Illinois is a great spot. Let me let me guess. Northern Rock Rockle Rockford, Northern. Well, or it could be. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, up in that area, anyway. Um, Free Range Jevic says, "Hey, Mike, I'm stuck in the nightmare historic <laughs> historical state of New Zealand. Uh, got kicked out of a gym and Taekwondo club. Oh my gosh, man, I'm so sorry to hear that. I, I just don't see how governments are still closing gyms." Uh, insane. Cynthia from Long Island. Cynthia, thank you for being here. Joe says, uh, here's a better idea. Instead of mandating exercise, let's abolish all jobs that don't involve labor uh, for your wages. That's exercise. I, I'm with you, Joe, but there are certain jobs, you know, customer service, graphic design, web design, you know, coding that, that are sedentary, but that you could have a a standing desk like me. I have a standing desk. You know, uh, I'm sitting here kind of moving around. Some people have treadmill desks, right? So you, there's things that we can do. So why aren't we at least encouraging that, right? Okay. Um, hello from Seattle. So we have uh, Dominica de, de Gratis. Thank you for being here. Okay. Uh, Volek says, what about 3,000 steps to compensate the rest days? Oh, I already read that comment. Okay. Um, I, I think that's an... The second time you've written that comment, thank you for that. 30,000 steps is a lot. Uh, most people do not need to do that much uh, every single day. But I, I mean, hey, if you can if you can do it, okay, fine, good for you. Um, so that's, that's, but if we, if most people could get in the neighborhood of 10, 12,000 steps, that would be great. Okay, Bruce Wayne says, is losing cold tolerance healthy? 
Uh, I moved from cold weather city to a warm weather city and can't, can't tolerate the cold, but the sunshine and vitamin D is incredible. So I would focus on the latter, Bruce. You know, you mentioned the former. You left a cold city to a hot, hot place. We want resilience, but <laughs> it's hard to beat the sun. This is why tropical, warmer areas grow more vegetables, grow more plants, uh, sustain more wildlife, uh, and all that. Um, there's something to be said about the sun. Okay. So um, just do what you can. Maybe, maybe you know, don't turn on the heat in the winter. Don't be one of these people that says, oh my gosh, it's 70 degrees and I'm freezing, right? So that could be something. It's, it's all relative uh, to your baseline. So, um, okay, Swamp Hawk says, I'm an e e IT guy here trying to feed my family. Totally, right? So we can't just cut out any sort of sedentary jobs um, and say that they're unnecessary. We have IT people, we have tech people, we have all that. So uh, I'm sure Swamp Hawk, because he's he's been here for years commenting, thank you for that, but um, you know, you probably have a standing desk, you might have a treadmill desk, you might do 10 push-ups at the end of an hour, things like that. Okay. All right, Reed Bradley MSRRT says, I am a respiratory therapist and work mostly with pediatrics. Uh, I am so frustrated that as a medical community, we are not suggesting getting the truth out about uh, severe COVID-19 in peds. Yeah, uh, what are you seeing in the, in the ped population? Is it more overweight kids, um, kids with issues? I would love to know that because that's what the data shows, but we don't hear that from the media. Okay. We have, um, so St Stumble Liner says, I use a desk cycle, uh, use it without thinking after a while. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's amazing that uh, how you adapt to that. Hello, Rule Bueno from Texas. Thank you for being here. Um, please, more Fauci impersonations. <laughs> laughter uh, is good for one's health. Yeah, laughter is good for one's health. Um, so we, I, I see that we have a lot more folks joining in with us, friends. We were just talking about this study here. The title is The Association Between Physical Activity and Immunogen Immunogenicity of an Inactivated in Virus Vaccine Against SARS-CoV-2 in Patients with Autoimmune Rheumatic Disease. And what we were simply pointing out here is there is a significant, statistically significant difference in the amount of protective antibodies in people who regularly exercise compared to people who don't. Now, um, it's important you know, to recognize that uh, this isn't the mRNA vaccine. This is a, a different type of inactivated, attenuated vaccine. But still, you know, there is data, uh, and we shared with you this study uh, right here, that even when it comes to the mRNA uh, vector vaccines, you know, mRNA uh, type vaccines, that there is a difference in the antibody levels in people who are regularly uh, exercising and don't have belly fat compared to those who do. So that's the point is like, if we're going to double down on all these different sort of mandates and stuff, why aren't we also mandating aspects of healthy living? That's the point. Okay, Critical Think says, Mike, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for that. We live in North Atlanta suburbs, and the Fulton County is going remote this week. Oh, my gosh, new mandates and everything else. Oh, my. I know. I think all the schools nationwide are going to cancel again. I mean, what's the, the paradox of this? is we now have data showing all of the unintended harms associated with closing schools uh, from especially for you know kids that are uh, at or below poverty levels, uh, family income in that regard. Uh, we know it's so bad for, for uh, screen addictions and screen time. I mean, sedentary activity. Like we now know how problematic closing schools are, but guess what? Many cities, major cities are going to do the same thing. Now, what we also know, which is sort of paradoxical, again, is that the virus is even more benign than it, than it was before, <laughs> even though it's more infectious or transmissible. So this is when you know, like that's the definition of insanity, right? Like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So it's like, um, I... To me, I just think it's it's ridiculous, but you all know that. Okay, Steve King says, thanks for the studies, Mike. Good resources for our school communities. Hey, my pleasure. Uh, Christina Nicolay says, hello from the UK. I've been watching many of your videos. Hey, thank you for sharing those with friends and so forth. Uh, appreciate that. And hello from across the pond. Thank you for being here. Okay. Um, what else do we got? What is going on? Okay, so we have um, uh, 
905 Orange says, I can't wait for the electrolyte sticks. Yes, we are super, super, super excited. Um, there's a lot that went in behind the scenes to, to make that come to fruition. So thank you for all of you that participated in the presale. Um, okay. Uh, Imran says, I have seven nephews and nieces plus three of us um, who were over at my place for the Christmas, uh, except two all got COVID and are recovering. Very mild symptoms. Today, Ontario government announced another lockdown. Don't we know that lockdowns? Okay. Lockdowns would be helpful if there was no no virus yet inculcated or if it hadn't been sort of, if there wasn't a lot of community spread. But the science is quite clear. Once there's community spread, the lockdowns cause more harm than good. Uh, and, and so what are they waiting for? Do, doesn't Canada have vaccine at this point? Like, I, I don't get it. Um, I don't get it, friends. But I, I think it's it's... It's it's tough to, to watch from a distance, that's for sure. Okay. Um, so our Bradley MS, uh, respiratory therapist, just for those of you who can't see the chat and if you're listening, he says, uh, sorry for the character limit prevented the comment that almost all pediatric uh, cases in the ICU are either immunocompromised or obese. Okay, so this is from a respiratory therapist who works in the ICU, my friends. So uh, all that stuff that you hear about with perfectly healthy from the media, oftentimes it's not perfectly healthy at all. Um, okay, so Bradley says, as you have reported significant increase in child obesity with closing schools and sports. This is the thing, the unintended harms. We're, we're constantly looking at th this through these, these weird COVID is the only health problem lens when there's all these other additional health problems and our mitigation strategies have unintended harms that worsen or add kerosene to the fire of obesity, metabolic disease, anxiety, depression, mental health issues, probably gender dysphoria. I mean, the list goes on. And so, um, again, all of this for a pathogen that really doesn't significantly impact children, according to uh, large data sets that we have throughout the world. Okay. Cherise Jones says, uh, can your immune system be healthy if you're overweight? Yes, this is true. If you are metabolically healthy and if you exercise, and so this is important. Cherise, and I don't have this study, but I will go back and find it because I think it's, it's all of a sudden the flu is back, right? And people are getting COVID and the flu at the same time. So one study in overweight nurses found that overweight nurses who didn't exercise and they got the flu vaccine and they looked at their seroconversion uh, of the antibody levels after the vaccine to see if there was a protective effect. What various studies have shown that when these nurses start exercising, if they were in that category that didn't get protective effects from the vaccine, for example, uh, once they started exercising, even if they didn't lose any weight, there was this dramatic improvement in the effectiveness of the vaccine. So there's there's that study. There's also studies of, of where people carry their, their fat, particularly for women and men. If they don't have fat around the abdominal, the belly region, it's a little bit more benign or not as deleterious com as compared to that if, if they do have that fat. So around the back of the arms, the glutes, the, the hamstrings. Uh, so you can be overweight uh, and not carry problematic fat. So that's the point. It's, it's not this deterministic thing like, oh my gosh, you have a little weight to lose, you're doomed, you're screwed, you're going to die. It's not like that. Um, even if you don't lose any weight and you start improving your diet, you start cutting out sugar, you manage your stress, you go to bed earlier, you go to bed at nine o'clock. I encourage a lot of you to do that if you can. You exercise every day, you walk after a meal. You are doing so much more than the average person. So much more, my friends. And that's going to do a few different things. Help prevent chronic diseases. You're more likely to die from heart disease, from dementia, from cancer than you are from this pathogen, particularly if you're under the age of 65. So if you start doing these things, you're walking after meals, you're managing your stress, you're meditating, you're eating in a calm, relaxed state, you're eating within you know three hours before you go to bed, you're doing all these different things, you're doing so much more than the average person and you're really supporting your body's immune and metabolic health. So yes. Um, you know, there are skinny people too who are fat on the inside. They're metabolically obese. So just because you have visible fat doesn't mean you're doom and gloomed and that and that you're gonna gonna die, right? That's not the case. So we we all need to understand that. Okay. 
Okay, better to go to bed at 9.30 EST. Yeah, I mean, if you live on the East Coast, that's a good time. Okay. Uh, lots of great questions here. Milo says, I'm glad there's a community talking about the obvious. Somewhere along the way, we weren't allowed to talk about obesity, and uh, that's when uh, the obesity pandemic started. Yeah, I mean, isn't it funny when these things become politically incorrect or taboo, and you sort of can't talk about them, they do sort of become a problem, right? Obesity, there's other conditions and other other situations, you know, where, uh, you know, that are that are problematic and, and it, we weren't allowed throughout the pandemic to to say well disease severity is different based upon your current metabolic health people thought well you're you don't care about people you want people to die you want someone's grandma to die you know all that sort of thing well we know now everyone even dr fauci's talking about well disease severity does matter and this is you know sort of um you know and if you end up in the hospital for other reasons and you have covid maybe that's not such a big deal maybe that's not a covid case uh you know so it's interesting how these things sort of uh, you know come around but it is important that we uh that we sort that we talk about actual health uh really really important stuff okay uh, Dana says, do you recommend this vaccine even for those with natural immunity? Um, so, Dina, I, I'm, I'm going to punt that question. Um, I appreciate your I appreciate your question, though. Um, what I will say is uh, individuals that are high risk and elderly, um, they should consider uh, an immunization. That, that's what I will say uh, for that. So Milo says for some uh, another question here uh, came in here. Um, Love Self says it's it's so it's so many great uh, at home workout videos. Yes, so there are many great workout videos out there. Uh, Eric says in the Netherlands, very high percentage of people stopped playing sports since March 2020, which is just a shame. And then we're wondering why cases are increasing, why hospitalization rates have increased. I mean, it's just it's just like. To me, it seems so obvious. Um, okay. Oh, my gosh. Miko says, we're back in lockdown where I live again. Oh, my gosh. Is this Canada? I mean, I, I thought I saw something circulating on Instagram about this, but it's just it's just crazy. Yes, yeah, Swampock, thank you for that. It's Florona. That's a combination of flu and COVID all at once. So we have a lot more friends with us now. So let me just quickly review where, where we started this conversation, friends. And that is about exercise. So uh, it's this study right here. And, and this was a study in immune-compromised individuals who have an autoimmune arthritic type disease, an ARDS, okay, an ARD. So I think there's, what, 1,300? I'm sorry. Um, okay, so there, there was uh, 898 people who had a rheumatic disease, and there was 197 controls, okay? Now, this is why we should be promoting exercise, because as you've heard the media sort of change our tune is people can be vaccinated but still vulnerable and the unvaccinated pose a risk to these vaccinated but vulnerable people. So this is why we should be promoting exercise because we want people to not be vulnerable, okay? Well, and what the study found is there was a difference in the conversion of antibodies into protective antibodies that was statistically significant in individuals that exercise compared to those who don't. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this video with you uh, is because I want you to know this information because you probably have friends or family that won't see you, that won't talk to you, that won't go be in the same room as you, but they don't even exercise, right? And so if we're serious about this, you know, solving this public health problem with these strategies, then shouldn't we also be serious about exercise, about eating real food, about losing belly fat? Because we have reviewed this study now many, many times. Uh, you can read the title here. Antibody responses to one of the mRNA vaccines. This was Pfizer. Uh, in infection, naive individuals with abdominal obesity warrants attention. This is the direct words from the scientists in Italy. And what they showed is there was significant differences in the levels of antibodies 90 to 100 days after vaccination in people who have belly fat compared to those who don't. So, Really, really important stuff here, uh, and I think um, you know there should be some recommendations for people who are so-called vulnerable to become less vulnerable by way of exercise and nutrition. So, um, again, that's just my biased um, 
But it's sad to see different countries now shutting gyms down again for the second time. It's just sad. So friends, um, I do want to thank you for being here live with us. Thank you so much. That really means a lot to me. Uh, just one last reminder. Uh, the Electrolyte 6 are coming out on the 16th of this month. We have our final pre-sale. It's a little bit different than the other one. You buy one, you get the second one half off. A lot of you have already been part of the BOGO sale, but this one is a little bit different. Buy one, get the second one half off over at myoscience.com. This is a really unique formulation. If you take electrolytes, if you intermittent fast, if you're physically active, you're going to dig this travel-friendly formula um, that is sugar-free, really, really great formula. So you can use a coupon code over at myoscience.com. So that's it for today, friends. We have a lot of cool content coming for you this week. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year to you. And we will catch you on a future video down the road. Appreciate you guys and gals. See y'all. Bye.